Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. I have some fun coastal acorn projects for you today for fall. But first, don't forget to subscribe. The bell if you like to be notified when I post new videos. And a thumbs up is always appreciated. Okay, my first idea is a acorn shaker shadow box. I found these awesome acorn, wooden acorns at the Dollar Tree and I picked up a couple packages. I thought they'd be really fun to make one of those shaker shadow boxes. It's like a shadow box that's gonna have acorns in it, but you can shake it and rearrange it and it's kind of like decoration and a toy. So I found um, that I had two of these little shadow boxes. Now one of them is not quite enough, but I think two of them together will be big enough for the acorns. Now what I'm doing here is on the inside of the glass, I'm trying to take the paint off. I'm using um, fingernail polish remover. I've heard that that takes the paint off the glass, most items from the Dollar Tree. And it is taking a little bit of elbow grease, but it is working. That one um, at the bottom of it was the very hardest, but I just kept scrubbing and scrubbing and it did take the paint off. Now my plan um, on these is the glass is kind of boxed in these, you can't really take them out. So I'm gonna use this one for the glass on the front of the shaker shadow box and then I'll use the other glass for the back of it and I'm gonna put all the little acorns inside. Now, what I noticed was I got all the paint off, but you could still kind of read the message on there, like almost like a light etching. So I followed that up with a little bit of Windex and that did the trick. It took off everything and made it like completely clear glass. So I think this is gonna work. Now my plan for this project is to not only make a sh shaker shadow box, but to also use my Cricut machine and some vinyl from the Dollar Tree to, um, make decals for the front of it. I think that would be fun. So here I am just taking apart the second one and I won't need the backs anymore. I just plan to put both fronts together like that, back to back. And I'm just testing to make sure the acorns will fit and look at that perfect fit. Now you get like, how many in a package? Eight in a package. So I have 16 acorns and I end up using all of them. Now for the back of my shaker shadow box, I'm using some of this adhesive wallpaper from the Dollar Tree. This is the white shiplap kind. I'm just kind of cutting that to size and I'm just gonna stick that on the back glass of our shaker shadow box. Now I have found that only one of my Dollar Trees carry this. I don't know why. It's really pretty and they have some great kinds. You'll see one later that's my favorite. I probably need to stock up on it. But they're really nice size sheets of adhesive wallpaper and they're great for DIYs. It, think of it just kind of like a scrapbook paper with adhesive on the back. So I'm just trimming that, making sure that it fits. And then I am just gonna peel off the back and stick it down like a sticker. And we have a back for our sh shaker shadow box. Now, when I put the two items together, you could kind of see inside, there was like a groove made on the inside. I did have a little bit of an, um, a nick right here from one of the nails when I pulled off the back and I'm touching that up, but I still didn't really like that groove inside and I thought that might be an opportunity to put something kind of special in there. And then I was thinking, I wanna do like a coastal feel to these projects. And so I was thinking that rope from the Dollar Tree would be perfect for this. Now this is not the like really wide brown rope, it's kind of the medium size and it fits inside that groove really well. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of hot glue to start the rope and then I'm just gonna use one piece and go all the way around using hot glue like maybe two or three times on each side until we have that boxed and it's just another little fun surprise inside our shaker shadow box. Another little coastal detail And so we're doing this side and then I'm gonna go around and cut it just to size and glue off the final piece. And that fits perfectly in there. It kind of sticks up right now, but once I put the other one on there, there isn't like an opening on that one too, and it fits in there just like a glove. 
Now I'm carefully gonna go around and burn off any loose fibers on that rope just to kind of clean it up a little bit. But not so much that I'm gonna catch anything on fire or melt anything. And I think that looks pretty good. And that's how they fit together with that on there. So I'm testing out to see if they'll all fit. And that's about a perfect fit. Two packages of the little wooden acorns. And because I don't want to be too full, I want it to be able to where you can shake the little acorns around inside of it. Now comes the fun part. We got to paint all these little acorns. So I'm going to start with some Antique Wax by Waverly. And I'm just going to go in and stain the little caps. Is that what they're called on the top of the acorns on all of these? And just by slapping on some Antique Wax and then following that up with a paper towel to wipe off any excess easy peasy um i you'll notice that i'm getting some on the acorn totally doesn't matter because i'm going to go in in a minute and i am going to be painting all of those acorns and so i just want to go in and get a nice stain on the top of all of the little acorns And I really love these little wooden items. I also picked up apples and I plan on be doing an apple tear tray for my kitchen for fall. And I thought there was something else. Oh, they had mushrooms, but I don't think I got those, but those were super cute too. All right. So my plan here is to do like an ombre shade. I want to do like all different colors of blue. Um, that reminds me of the ocean, all the different shades of blue in the ocean. And so my first color I'm doing here is a chalk paint by Waverly. And this is the color Agave. And I am just going to use a little tiny brush. And they don't have to be perfect, but just trying to paint the acorn in that pretty color of Agave. And I think I'm going to do four in each color. That way I'll have a variety of colors inside there. And I think that's going to make this project extra special. This is a chalk paint by Waverly as well, and this is the color Lagoon, and it's like a very like teal color. Very bright and pretty. And so I'm just taking my time and using a little tiny brush and going on and painting those for Lagoon. Now this color is um, chalk paint by Waverly as well, and the color is Pool. It's a very soft blue, and it provides a nice variety against some of those more bold colors. So I'm going to do four of the little acorns in pool. And that was all the shades that I had except for ocean, which is kind of more of a royal blue um, in the chalk paint. And so for the last four, I'm going to switch to an acrylic paint just because I had a different shade of blue. And I believe this is called turquoise. And so I'm going to do four acorns in turquoise. And I think that's a nice variety of blue colors for our little shaker shadow box. Okay, we got all of those acorns painted and I'm just drying them there with my heat gun and we are ready to start putting this little project together. I'm just kind of scattering them in there, trying to alternate the colors, which doesn't really matter because I'm going to be shaking it up, but just to kind of get it set up for the first time. I kind of want them to be piled up higher on one side than the other, kind of like that. Now I'm making sure that I have my glass super shiny clean inside because once I glue this onto the back frame, I'm not going to be able to clean it. So what I'm going to do to attach these trees to each other is just use hot glue. I use Gorilla Glue hot glue and it also works for wood. So I'm gonna go around all four edges with a thin bead of hot glue and just sit my top frame on. And we have assembled our shaker shadow box. Just removing the excess hot glue around the sides. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to cut some vinyl from the Dollar Tree with my Cricut and um, do something um, that has to do with acorns or nuts. And the pattern that I found um, was just using Cricut Design Space. I used pre-made things they had on there um, with a membership. So I just measured that and I went and, you know, I was very resistant to sign up to that, the design space, but I struggle with finding 
like fonts that I like for projects and I'll spend for hour designing stuff. And so it's so nice when things are already made. And so these are the two things I picked out to put on there. The one of them, this one says nuts for fall. And then the other one is a little squirrel flying. And I thought it'd be fun to have like the little squirrel flying into the pile of acorns is what I was thinking. So I'm using my Cricut Bright Pad there. And then some of my favorite paper transfer paper to transfer my Dollar Tree white vinyl, permanent vinyl, to my little shaker shadow box. Just trimming it up so I can line that up on the inside of my shadow box. And just placing it on the glass, making sure that it is good and secure. And then I like to peel this off as flat as I can to reveal the vinyl. And there we go, nuts for fall. Now, the only thing I was thinking is I didn't really like the seam being shown with the two frames coming together. And I thought that would be cool to kind of cover that up with some kind of burlap. Now I kind of needed a skinnier burlap than this burlap from the Dollar Tree, but I figured I needed it about half the size. So I just cut enough for two sides and then I am just going to cut it in half. And that's gonna give me two um, skinnier strips of burlap. And that should be enough to go all the way around the frame. And I always like to pull off the first strand to give it a little bit of a slight fray. And I'm just gonna use hot glue to attach that and center that around my frame. And it just kind of covers up that seam between my two frames and gives another little coastal touch to the project. I really think burlap looks very coastal, very farmhouse. And it just gives another fun element to this like kind of cheap looking frame. So this is my second piece. So I'm gonna attach that with hot glue in this corner and then I'm just gonna work my way around and do the other two sides of our little shaker box frame. And there we go. I love this project. I think it's so much fun. My son really got a kick out of it as well. Now, the only thing I didn't really like that you could still kind of read that on the back and so I'm using some more of that wallpaper that I had left over from the Dollar Tree and I'm just cutting out a couple pieces to put over the back just to give me a super finished project because we're gonna be picking this up and playing with it. So I want it to look professional. Then I kind of thought it was a little too white. And so I'm just mixing a couple colors together, turquoise, ivory, and green. I added way too much green, so let me add more turquoise. I was kind of going for like a mint green color. I wanted something different than what I already had in there and something that would kind of go with some of the other projects that I'm making today. So it was a little too green, so I'm adding a little bit more turquoise. So remember, if you don't have the shade, you can probably make it with a little trial and error. Then I'm just gonna use just a little tiny brush and I just gonna carefully paint the front panel of my frame with that beautiful mint color. And I think that was just the final thing that my project needed. I probably should have done this before I attached the burlap, but I'm just trying to be kind of careful. Not like that. <laughs> and not get any on the burlap. And that is the final step in our little shaker box. Shaker shadow box, I think it turned out really fun. And you can't beat the fact that it is interactive as well. So I'm just trimming the burlap there where I did get a little bit of paint on there. And it is good to go. Yay, project number one is complete. I have one, two, three, four, five more projects to go. I had to look. Okay, here is the next acorn project. I want to make an acorn on a square wood sign. Now, it doesn't matter what sign, I'm using a fall sign. I just wanted a square sign for this project. So I just pulled the rope off of the top and the staples out and kind of tried to sand my damage. Now this side is a Dollar Tree sign, so of course it's got glitter on it. 
and I want it to look finished. So I'm just gonna use some of this wood grain contact paper. I love using this on the back of my Dollar Tree signs to give me a more finished product. I just cut it out a little too big for my sign, press it on there, and then just use a sanding block from the Dollar Tree and go around and that gives me a perfect cut and I can rip off the excess contact paper. Easy peasy way to finish the back of your Dollar Tree signs. Now this was really warped and so I work with it and work with it to try to flatten it out. That's one thing I don't like about Dollar Tree signs is the fact that they're so thin, but I do make it work. Now I am gonna paint the sign in ivory. This is Ivory Chalk Paint by Waverly and that bottle is empty and I am like, I'm using every last bit of it. I tell you, I need to go get more. And um, I'm, what I might wanna do here is kinda do like a white chip lap appearance, kinda like that contact paper, but maybe with a little bit more of a coastal feel. So I am using just a foam brush and I'm kind of working in one direction and trying to get a good coverage of that ivory on that sign. It's kind of, the back of those signs is kind of like an MDF. It's kind of like a cardboard wood. And I put a little spackle in there because you could kind of see the little holes left over from the staples. And I'm going over with another coat of that ivory chalk paint. And it doesn't have to be perfect because um, I'm gonna go for a weathered look, but I want it to be fairly white. And I'm speeding that up there with my heat gun. And then I am gonna use my ruler and just an ink pen, and I am just gonna draw on lines where I think the different boards would be. I'm not even measuring them. I'm just kind of eyeballing it, kind of like shiplap, kind of like boards or decking. And I am then gonna go in, instead of um, distressing it with Antique Wax by Waverly, I'm just gonna go in and distress it with Agave. I kind of want it to have a vibe with a little bit of a white with like a little bit of a blue touch. And so I go over all the edges of all where my boards would be. So that includes the lines that I put on there as well. Then I follow that up with a baby wipe to wipe off any excess paint and distress my little boards. Now, you can tell I keep trying to like straighten it out. I am gonna attach another wood piece to the sign which does make it um, way flatter and way more stable. Now, I was thinking that it was a little too blue so I am going back and distressing with ivory as well with the chunky brush from the Dollar Tree. And I don't know what it is. I usually have really good luck with these brushes but I must have got like some bad batches because they are like losing all of their little strings in my paint and it's kind of annoying. Okay, before I get any further, I'm gonna go ahead and just use some twine and some hot glue and just make a simple hanger for the back of our sign um, to hang the final product just before I have anything else on here. And now we're gonna start working on our acorn. Now this is a just a plain wood acorn hanging from the Dollar Tree. And this is some more of that adhesive wallpaper from the Dollar Tree. Isn't it beautiful? It's so peachy and coastal, I love it. And I thought it'd be fun just to cover the acorn part of my acorn. So I'm just gonna draw that on there. Now I don't really want this line to be like a straight line cause I want it to look more 3D. So I'm just gonna kind of try to freehand like kind of a little bit of an arch of a line coming out of there to give it a little bit more dimension and not just a straight line. And then I'm just gonna go in here with my scissors and cut out that adhesive wallpaper to the size of our little acorn. Now I thought that this would add a nice touch of blue. It's definitely gonna give me a coastal feel and it's fun, you can put anything on these signs. So I have it cut just about perfect. And so all I'm gonna do is peel off the back of that wallpaper and stick that to our wooden sign. Easy peasy. It's so pretty. I think I'm gonna have to get lots of this wallpaper <laughs> for sure. And I'm just kind of smoothing the edges, making sure that I have it cut perfectly to size and that there's nothing hanging off on the sides. Now for the top of the acorn, I thought I would cover it in some of this burlap. This is just a roll of burlap that I picked up at Walmart. 
and it, there's kind of some odd angles here. So I was trying to like just draw that on like a pattern, but the ink pen and the burlap really couldn't work very well. And I could not find a marker to save my life there on my workbench. <laughs> so I keep trying. And then I'm like, you know what? I'll just kind of eyeball it. So I just kind of cut up there in the middle. And I am just going to try to cut that arch kind of by just by looking at it with my fabric scissors, like half of it at a time. Like that. And that was the part that I was worried about. Um, the rest of it should be easy to trim around the edge of my acorn. So I'm just going to glue that down with just a little bit of hot glue. I wasn't sure if I was going to do burlap on this stem as well, but I do end up deciding to do that because I think it is just an easy um, way to decorate that. So I use a little spackle to fill in that little hole on the stem before I glue down the burlap to that as well. Now all I have to do is go in with some really sharp scissors and cut around my acorn. And that's gonna be a really nice texture for the top of my acorn. And I think it really gives a nice coastal feel to my project. So just trimming that up. And so easy, look how easy that was to decorate this large acorn from the Dollar Tree. And I didn't even have to use any paint for it. And I'm just trimming it and making sure that I think it looks perfect. And I tried not to use too much hot glue when I was gluing that down because I didn't want the glue to come out and make a mess all over my burlap. Now I was kind of trying it on and I was like, it doesn't match fantastic like the shades of blue. So what I'm gonna do is go in with just a little bit more ivory and whiten it up a little more I think I distressed it with a little blue a little bit more than I intended. So I'm just kind of going over the boards, kind of trying to still leave like the lines um, between the two boards. And brightening that up just a touch. Then I decided I wanted something with that like mint green color that is on that wallpaper. And so I'm just gonna use a paint pen in this mint green color. Um, I have like a pack of paint pens I got at Amazon. I love them. I'll post a link below. They have so many colors and it comes in handy for projects like this when you just need a quick paint pen. And I just drew those lines straight down and it made uh, the pieces go together a little bit more. Now I am trying to figure out which way I want my acorn to go. I decide which way and then I just use a bunch of hot glue on the back of our acorn. And now gluing this big wood sign to the other wood sign and flattening that out definitely flattened out the bowing that I was getting on that thin square sign. And I'm just making sure that's really secure. And trimming up the burlap that is a little bit frayed on the sides. Now this is kind of a work in project process. I was like trying to figure out, I wanted to decorate something more. Well, I picked up some of these little tear tray starter kits at Target Dollar Spot the other day. They have all these great things in there. I also got an apple one too that I think is gonna be great for my apple tear tray. And it's just kind of like a starter pack. And it has this little sign in it that says, I love fall most of all. And it's like the perfect color of wood for this project. It's coastal. The only thing I was confused about is that it had a hanger on the top and I already have a hanger on my sign. And I thought that was a little redundant. And so what I'm going to do is just take that off. But now I have the two open holes. So to disguise that, I'm just going to use some jute twine and string that through and just tie a simple bow on the top. And that's going to serve the purpose of getting, of hiding those little holes in that sign. And it gives me a little decorative bow for the top of my sign. Now I played around, I couldn't decide exactly where I wanted it, but I actually do end up going with the middle of the sign is where I want to put it. So I'm just kind of measuring to make sure that I'm really kind of in the middle and I'm just going to attach that to our acorn with some hot glue. And it's a small sign, but I think it provides a nice little touch to the sign. 
And then I wanted to decorate some of the dead areas of the sign as well. So I dug out some seashells to give another little coastal touch to this fall sign. And I'm just kind of playing around with them and deciding which ones that I think look best. And then I'm just going to attach those to the sign with a little bit of hot glue and carefully so I don't burn myself. Just doing some around the edges, a little bit at the bottom, adding more if it's not like sticking right away. And they're pretty light, so they're pretty easy to hot glue down. I'm even putting a little fancy shell on there too. And I end up using two shells on the top and I think three shells here on the bottom just to kind of fill in some of that space and add another little fun coastal touch to our little acorn fall sign. And I am just hot gluing down that last one, but first it had a little shell trapped inside, so I saved that and then I'm hot gluing that one down as well. Okay, now I was kind of thinking that it looked a little plain with that Dollar Tree um, sign. So I wanted something to frame it out with. So I'm gonna use some rope from the Dollar Tree, which is gonna add another coastal touch. And it, this is the really thick one. Before I was using the kind of medium one, this is the really thick one. And I really like it. I'm just hot gluing that to the edges of my sign and it's bigger than my board. So it does kind of provide a frame for our project and it totally changes the whole vibe of it. I really love how this part turned out. And I am having to use hot glue pretty much on every surface here to make sure that that stays tight and secure. I'm just gonna kinda get my hanger out of the way. I can still use that. I just wanna keep gluing that rope to the top of the frame and just go by the hangers there. And I'm kind of doing half of a side at a time because I don't want the hot glue to dry before I get the rope placed down there and just kind of lining that up and pressing that down until the hot glue is dry. And rope can really add a lot to a project like this and I like to incorporate it as much as I can in these coastal projects because I really think it gives a really a coastal flair. And I'm gonna go around all four sides here and just wrapping it around. And then at the end, I will cut it. The fibers kind of come apart a little bit when you cut the rope, but when you use hot glue, you can kind of glue those back together and give it a finished edge here at the end. So I'm doing that last half. And then I'll go in with hot glue and glue the ends together there. Just trimming them up first a little bit. And that's what I'm talking about, how it comes apart and just kind of squeezing those together with the little tips of my um, hot glue finger protectors. And we have a finished project. I really love how this turned out. It's so coastal and it's fall both in this little sign. And I have this hanging on my entryway. That is what I'm making these little acorn projects for, is to decorate my little coat rack I had inside my front door. And I think that these projects are gonna work really well and kind of go with the rest of my coastal decor that I like to keep up year round. Okay, also on that little coat rack, I wanted to make a little acorn um banner like a pennant and so i'm going to use some of these little acorns from their ornaments from the fall section at dollar tree and i'm just going to use some antique wax by waverly and just stain the top of each acorn now i'm going to use a paper towel to follow that up to wipe off any excess and it's such a fast easy way to stain your wood I'm also gonna do the back because they're gonna kind of be dangling on a rope. And so, you know, you might be able to see the back. I wanted the back to be a finished project as well. So I just did the same thing to the back. And I'm just using five. I think there was like eight, I think in that package. But five is gonna be plenty for the area that I'm gonna do. And I'll just save those extra ornaments for later. 
Now, I thought I wanted to wrap them with something, but I also wanted them to be diff two different colors. So I'm gonna use some jute twine from the Dollar Tree and also some of this mint green chenille yarn from the Dollar Tree. It's really soft. I did a DIY where I wrapped a pumpkin in this. It turned out really pretty. And I just hot glue to start and then wrap around my acorn. Now the little tip part of the acorn here was tricky. Um, it was easier on the yarn than it was the twine. And I think it's because the yarn is thicker and it was easier to cover. But if it starts falling off or it's not staying on, then um, just do more hot glue. And you can see, I mean, even on the yarn one, it was a little bit of struggle when you got down here to the end. And so I was just kind of hot gluing, gluing that down and trying to work to the tip of the acorn. And I finally got it. And what I'm going to do um, on this little banner, is that the right word for it? A pennant banner? Yeah. Um, is I'm going to do two of the mint green yarn and I'm going to do three of the jute twine from the Dollar Tree. So here's the second one that I'm going to do in this pretty color. I love this yarn from the Dollar Tree. It's so soft and pretty. I can't believe it's from the Dollar Tree. This one I decided to do a different technique. Since I had so much trouble on the last one, I decided to start from the bottom. And it was a struggle getting started on that one as well, but it did seem to go better than the other one. So I decided to do that technique when I do my jute twine. Now the jute twine is really thin and skinny, and so it just kept kind of falling off on me, even when I was using glue. And then I was having trouble covering all of the wood with it. Um, I just kind of keep taking it off if it gets messed up and trying again, and using um, extra hot glue. I think if you had maybe a little bit of a thicker size of a jute twine, it would have been easier, kind of like the same diameter as the yarn, but we got it to work there. On these, I noticed I, I had one better looking side on all of them, and so those are the sides that I'm definitely going to show on the little pennant banner, and um, I am just wrapping this one. This one I decided to go from the top, and I got to the bottom, and... I still struggle, but I'm just using hot glue and trying to get it on there uniformly and not have any craziness. I kind of got mad on that one and just pulled it all out and started over and that did work better. Because once they start falling off, um, <laughs> then you're in trouble. And so this one, you'll notice I did have to start over a couple of times. I have this way sped up because you don't want to see me just sit here wrapping these things over and over. But this one I just used as much hot glue as I possibly could. I finally got it. But it definitely tested me. <laughs> Yay. Okay. So we have one more to do. And I'm going to do that one in jute twine as well. What I'm going to do is string these on more jute twine. And hang these at the top of my little coat rack that I have next to my front door and I think it's going to be just an easy little acorn decorative piece there to go with some of these other pieces that I am making for it today. So this one I started at the top too because on the twine I found it didn't really matter if you started at the top or the bottom. It was kind of difficult either way on these. Just taking my time hot gluing as much as I can when I go around the tip and that made it way easier. And kind of cleaning that one up and making sure that there was no exposed wood underneath my jute rope wrapping and we finally have our little acorns. Now the twine pieces kind of have a lot of strings on them so I'm just using my lighter to kind of burn those off and we are ready to string these. I'm just going to use jute twine and the first time I tried to go through I just strung them like that. Didn't like it because they all hung sideways. So they came with these little tiny um, jute strings to hang them as ornaments. So I go back in and I decide to use those instead. That way I can tie those to the jute twine and I can push them from side to side 
but the acorns are going to hang flat and so you'll be able to see them. And so I'm just going to start with the center one and I'm going to tie that off into a double knot, trim off the excess, but not too close to the knot because I don't want it to untie. And I'm going to do that on all of those. I'm not tying down like super tight because I want it to be where you can kind of slide it, kind of arrange it the way you want it once you get it hanging. And so you can have like even spacing in between all of the little acorns. And this project was a little challenging with the wrapping of these. I thought they would be a little bit easier because it was a pretty basic shape, but you never know with these kind of things. Okay. Next project, I got this great little um, copper acorn at the Dollar Tree, but it doesn't really go with the colors that I'm doing today, and so I thought I would make it a little bit more coastal. So I wanted to use um, that turquoise color again. Um, I wanted to brighten it up a little bit though, so I am gonna kind of mix a custom color of blue here. And you can mix acrylic and chalk paint together to get um, things, because the chalk paint's gonna give you really good coverage um, and stick to things, um, but the acrylic can change up your color if you don't have the right color of chalk paint. And I'm telling you, I was really going to town on that ivory. I Next time, I'm not gonna get this big of a size of the ivory, because it got really thick and hard to work with towards the end, and um, <laughs> kinda hard to get your paintbrush in there as well. So I just mixed up a little bit lighter color of turquoise and I am just painting all around this great little acorn. I also got one of these in a pine cone um, that I might use like maybe on one of my fall tier trays and they're just a cute little fun piece. And I'm going to prop this up I think on my little sailboat and it's going to go with the rest of my acorn decor because now the colors are going to kind of match. So once I get that light turquoise on there, I'm just using my heat gun to dry that. Now, what I'm gonna do for the top of the acorn is um, I'm gonna use Antique Wax by Waverly on that, which is not normally the kind of material I would use that on, but I'm gonna make it work. And I'm just going over with another coat of that light turquoise to make sure you can't see any of that copper color through. And again, the copper is really pretty. I would have used it just as is if it would have matched the acorn decor a little bit more. But I wanted it to be blue. <laughs> and I'm not worrying, I don't have it taped off or anything about being perfect. I'm just trying to get it painted as neatly as possible. And here's the Antique Wax by Waverly. It had a really nice textured surface. So I'm kind of just going all over. I want to kind of, it's okay if some of the copper shines through, but it was really shiny. Didn't really want it to be quite that shiny. And this did help tone it down a little bit. Just going all over the top of that cap. And this did take a while to dry on that surface. Cause again, it's not like staining wood. It's like kind of like painting it to be honest but I'm using my heat gun to speed it up a little bit. And I'm not gonna do much else with this acorn. Um, I do um, dress it up a little bit. I'm gonna just touch up the paint here where I wasn't very straight when I was painting that antique wax on there. I did get a little bit on my acorn and so I'm just touching that up with a little bit more of that light turquoise color. And then around the little acorn stem, I'm just going to tie like some simple um, jute twine around that. Nothing special, just going to tie it around and tie a sweet little bow on there. Now I do go back and distress this because you know I like things distressed. Um, I probably should have done that before I tied that little bow on there, but whatever. So I'm just gonna use a chunky brush and some of that ivory chalk paint. There's still a tiny bit left in that jar and I'm gonna distress that blue, kind of give it a little bit of a coastal vibe and wipe off any excess with a baby wipe. Then I kind of decided I liked how that turned out. So I do go in and try to distress the cap as well, trying to avoid um, getting any on that little twine bow that I already had tied on there. I was a little worried to do the top part because that antique wax was not like 
really dry. It was kind of dry, but I, I go for it anyway. And it did bring out a little bit of that crazy texture on the top of it. And give it a little bit more of a rustic vibe. And again, that chalk paint helped take away a little bit of the shininess on that top where um, some of that copper was showing through. Easy peasy. Okay, this is a Dollar Tree acorn and this is gonna be a thrift lip sign. I got this at uh, the Goodwill store for 99 cents. It's a great wood sign, very sturdy, and it came in this beautiful color that was kind of my inspiration. I'm like, I kinda wanted my sign to be that color. It's like a mint green, light blue. And so I'm gonna use one of these little rollers and pans from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna try to replicate that color even though I don't really have it. I'm gonna see what I can do. I'm gonna use turquoise, I'm gonna use light blue and I'm gonna do a touch of that light green and I get pretty close. And all I'm gonna do is use my roller and go in there and paint over. But first, it had a little bit of glitter on there, so I am just sanding that off, and I go in with my roller, and easy peasy. I'm going to go around and do all the sides. The sides were polka dots. I'm getting tons of paint on myself in the process, but that's okay. And that was like the simplest thrift flip ever, because that's going to be the background for this little acorn sign that we're going to do. And it's really sturdy, so I don't have to weigh it down or anything. It's going to stand up just fine on the top of my little coat rack. And um, I love reusing signs from the thrift store. You can often find higher quality things like this than you can from the Dollar Tree for the same price. So I did do another coat of that paint on there to make sure that you couldn't really read the writing. You kind of could a little bit in the middle, but there's going to be an acorn on there, so you're not going to be able to see it. Now, I was trying to decide what I wanted to do with this acorn. And I kind of decided, since it was slats, I kind of wanted to alternate like ivory and like a wood stain. And so I'm going in and painting that center one um, ivory. I'm still working on that bottle. There was, if I swear, there was a little bit left. <laughs> and then I'm gonna do both of the outsides of the acorn. And I'm not really taping it off. I'm just trying to be and trying to be careful because I want to stain those other two pieces and I don't want to get any paint on those because then it would interfere with the staining. So I'm just drying those with my heat gun and I'm going to stain those other two little slats with just some antique wax by Waverly. So I'm going to tape off my painted parts because that antique wax can be a little messy. When you're going in and I don't really want to get it all over the place. I also want to do the little slats behind that are poking through that hold the piece together. So I go in with a foam brush and just stain those. And then I kind of push in those little cracks to get those little boards in the back stain that color as well. And then I'm going to do the same thing here on the other side. And then I'm just going to follow that up with a paper towel and wipe off the excess antique wax. Okay, it's time to take off the painter's tape and reveal our stripes. Now, I don't want it to be like really bold like that. Um, I want it to look a little bit more coastal and beachy. So to do that, I go in with the chunky brush and the antique wax and I distress the ivory parts by going around the edges, really focusing on those and a little bit in the middle as well. And then following that up with a baby wipe to wipe off any, any excess and it gives me a nice weathered ivory shade. Then I thought the uh, stain parts was a little too um, dark too. And so I go in and do the same thing. I distress those with the opposite, which is the ivory. And I just use my foam brush and then a baby wipe and distress those. And you can see how that gives it like a whole different vibe. It's not like super striped. It's kind of more like weathered. Now, I did not fill in these holes on the top, so I'm going to kind of do the same thing that I did um, on the other project by using those just to have a little place to do a little twine bow. And that's going to give me a little finished um, bow for the top and take care of those holes on the top of the acorn as well. 
I was trying to decide if I wanted it crooked. I had it crooked on my previous sign, and so I decided to do this one straight. And I wanted to distress the uh, bottom sign a little bit more, so I'm just using some ivory and that um, tucky brush and distressing it a little bit all over, going on the edges, wiping off any excess with a baby wipe, and it lightened it up just a little bit. Then I was trying to decide if I wanted to use one of these little wooden signs from the Dollar Tree. You get a whole bunch in a package, and they have all kinds of great ones for fall. I just used hot glue on those two beams on the back that were holding the pieces together on the acorn to glue those to the back of the sign. Then I really like the natural color of this Welcome Fall sign, but I decided to distress it with a little bit of ivory just around the edges, just to bring it out just a tiny bit, but I really like the natural wood feel. Then I was trying to decide, I wanted to add something coastal. I thought maybe a shell might be fun on this sign, and I really like this one. The colors are like perfect. Um, with my sign, it's a little bit broken, but I think that can work. And then I'm kind of deciding if I want it like that or if I want it the other way. I end up using the shell on the bottom, it was broken, so I just used some heavy-duty scissors to try to trim off the other side to kind of make it even. And I decide I want Welcome Fall at the top, and I just do a little bead of hot glue on that straight line part and glue that to our little acorn. And then I am going to glue down this big shell here on the bottom. It's a really pretty shell. It's a little, like, um, neutral, and you can't really see the design too much, so I go in with my chunky brush and a little ivory and bring out a little bit of that texture to make it a little bit more obvious. Then I decided I wanted a couple leaves at the top. I thought maybe some maple leaves would be fun because it's an acorn. So I was just kind of playing around. I kind of liked the idea of doing like the green color, but I couldn't really decide. I was trying to decide how I liked them on there. So I'm gluing down the green one, and I couldn't really get two of the green ones on there in a way that I liked. And so I decided to look to see what other colors, and they have like this iridescent orange. And that's a nice little contrast against my um, light blue turquoise sign. So I'm going to use that one and glue that to the top of the acorn as well, just for a little fun pop of color. And we have our little Welcome Fall acorn sign. I didn't like my bow, and so I untied it and retied it. And now the project is perfect. <laughs> okay, last project. I have one more acorn project for you today. And it's one of these little acorn boxes. And I got this at the fall section at the Dollar Tree. And I'm always not really sure what to do with these. I mean, they make a great little planter, but they're kind of like not big enough to do a lot of things with. I'm just going to leave it open. And so I'm just going to use this shade of pool um, chalk paint by Waverly. And I'm going to kind of paint all the surfaces with this. Um, I do switch to a regular brush because those chunky brushes just, I don't know. And so I did the back, um, just because I want it to be a finished piece. I kind of want, I don't want any of that raw wood really showing through. I'm doing the base. I did both of the sides, and this doesn't have to be perfect, but I kind of just want a coat of light blue on all of the surfaces except for the front because I do plan to decorate the front a little bit differently. Now, you have to do, like when I'm doing the inside, um, that's going to be visible. And I do um, the back of the front too, just to make it more complete. And I even do inside the little box there, just because I'm not putting anything in it. And so I want it to be like a complete project. So I'm just trying to get in all those little corners in there and give me a nice shade of blue all over. This isn't the exact shade of what I'm working with for the front of the acorn, but it's pretty close. So I'm just drying that chalk paint and I'm going to use some more of that beautiful um, adhesive wallpaper. What's left over from our other acorn project. 
I thought it'd be fun to cover this acorn with that um, paper as well to tie that in a little bit more with the other sign and it's so coastal and I love the light blue. I think it really goes with the vibe of these acorn projects today. Now this was kind of a crazy cut so I just kind of sit it on there. I kind of go around take my time, kind of fold it as I go to see where I need to cut and cut that little um, piece to size before I stick that on. I also go in and do a little bit of blue paint along the edges because I want to make sure that um, I didn't cut it perfectly, that you didn't see any of that natural wood showing through. And I'm not going to worry about that one cut out part of the acorn. It's too complicated. Um, but I do leave that top cut out part there and I, it is attached to the top of, or the front of our acorn. Now I need to work on the top. So I have some of these gold diamond wrap stickers, I think they're called from the Dollar Tree. It doesn't matter what color they are, but they are nice and bumpy and I thought that would be a nice top to our acorn. And so I kind of cut this big enough and then I'm sticking it to it and then I'm going to trim around the top of my acorn. But my good KitchenAid scissors, I misplaced them and I was trying everything. I tried regular scissors, I tried a razor blade. This was a little bit more challenging to cut. I even tried using my floral scissors there. Then I decided to go find them and I did. They were in the kitchen, somebody took them. So I am going around and just kind of cutting around that circular opening there on the front of the acorn. Um, trying not really to cut through too many of them, even though these scissors totally can. Um, kind of working around little beads. And then I am also going to trim around the top. And that part's, that part's a lot easier. These scissors are so strong, these KitchenAid scissors, that they're great for crafting because they cut through really tough materials like this. Then I get that trimmed to size. It's actually kind of pretty because it's like gold bling, which really wasn't what I was going for, but if it is what you're going for, you could leave it like and be done. <laughs> but I did want to paint that um, and kind of make that look a little bit more matte and natural color. So once I get it all trimmed up, the first thing I'm going to do is to go in and paint that um, ivory. The reason that I do ivory um, first is because I'm going to then go in with the antique wax and kind of give it like a light wood um, finish. But I didn't think I'd really get that going on that metallic gold and that sticker background. So just giving a good coat of the ivory all over, getting in all the little nooks and crannies around all the little bumps. And I have only worked with this kind of uh, diamond mesh sticker once before, but it really gives you a great texture. I used it on my Olympics tear tray this summer and it was gold and it was bling. Okay. So I got that on there and then I'm just using my heat gun to dry before I go in there with my Antique Wax by Waverly and stain that a little bit brown. So I'm going in there with a chunky brush and again, all the fibers are falling out of those. I like every single one I try to use is like that. So I give up and I decide to use a foam brush and I'm kind of going all over. That ivory paint is not super dry, I think, yet. So the Antique Wax by Waverly kind of melts into it, but I kind of like it because it's kind of giving me that like burlap color, very coastal color to that top part of my acorn. And I, this is pretty much all I'm gonna do with this project. Going in and give it another coat of the Antique Wax and wait, wiping off the excess. I'm not going to put anything in it. I'm just going to kind of stand this up. It's kind of going to be on a high shelf and it's just going to be a nice little decorative touch. Just cleaning up any excess antique wax that I got out of there and I think it's good to go. I thought about putting a bow on it, but I don't think it really needs it. Okay, final reveal time. Here is our nuts for fall. 
little shaker shadow box with all the different colors of blue acorns inside with our little flying squirrel jumping, flying into the pile of nuts. <laughs> and here's our I Love Fall, most of all, super beachy coastal palm frond acorn with the burlap. It's got the seashells, it's got the rope border. It is so beachy. Here's a little pennant banner that we made with our little acorns that we wrapped in jute twine and yarn, both from the Dollar Tree, all from the Dollar Tree, and it looks great on the top of my little coat tree. Then I decorated the top shelf. Here is the little acorn that I painted. This was the one that was all brass. Gave it more of a beachy feel by making it blue and kind of darkening up the top of that acorn. And here's our little shelf sitter we made, the Welcome Fall, with this beautiful seashell on it. It looks so coastal and beachy, and the acorn is going straight up on that one just to make it look a little bit different than some of the other projects that we did today. And here is the last project. Looks great with all that texture from the stickers on the top, and we have the palm fronds on there as well, bringing out that blue coastal vibe. And then I have it also up there with one of my little shell sailboats. And this is how it all looks together on the top of my little coat tree. And I love how it turned out. Nice and blue to match the decor of my house. A little bit of coastal touches here and there. And I think it looks really fun. What do you guys think? Here, these are my acorn coastal DIYs for you today. Comment below which one was your favorite and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't. I would really appreciate it. We're almost at 3,000 subscribers, so that's super exciting. Okay, until next time, happy decorating. Bye.